Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the video chat show known as Culture of Paint. Tonight will contain some adult themes and uh, it's intended for a mature audience. So we're probably going to swear. Now let's talk about some painting. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Henry is having some well earned rest. I think he deserves it after painting all those white scars. So we've let him off this week. Uh, so I'm going to try and host tonight and remember the things that he says. But tonight we've managed to swing some uh, very special guests who've all won recently at the Golden Demon in Chicago. So we thought we'd get them on and chat about that. So how are we doing tonight, chaps? Very well, thank you. Oh, yeah. Very good. All good. Good, good, good. So everyone in the chat, uh, we would love for you to ask some questions. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do our usual picks of the week, but then we're going to go over the pieces that won at Golden Demon by these lovely gentlemen here. And if you've got any extra questions when the pieces come up, then uh, we'll try our best to uh, ask them. So uh, luckily, these are all friends of the cult. So this is how we've managed to swing having so many Golden Demon guests. So tonight we have Mr. James Cordwell uh, in the bottom there. And we have Martin Evans, and Hello. we have Robin McLeod, and then we're also joined Hello. by the usual Rich and Matthew. So, shall we dive in and do the picks? Because I'm sure our main topic's going to yeah. be quite a big one tonight. Yeah. So, can we all see it? Are we all ready? Yeah. Okay. So, first up is... Me! Rich's pick. Yeah. Um... There's a lot of Marines going on in the world at the moment, and <coughs> everything I'm painting is shockingly Space Marines. I know it's very strange for everyone to hear, but that's all I'm doing at the moment. Uh, so <laughs> I was flicking through, and everyone's doing heresy and or, or thinking about heresy, and then this popped up, and I just really liked it. I've been watching a... Um, there's like a, a an Instagram cartoon thread that that is about it's like a, a like a fantasy style quest thing. I'm just really into my fantasy at the moment, and I just saw this and I thought it was a really atmospheric, really cool piece. I enjoy the sort of uh, comic book style painting. I like how it's its little own little um, display, uh, and the paint job was really good. And I just thought it was really nice, really full of character and a bit bit different. Um, I don't know why I'm quite leaning into the idea of the sort of almost comic book style cartoony um, way of painting at the moment specifically for certain bits like this I've seen some Dragon Ball Z uh, models that have been rendered Z not Z, Z. Z. Dragon, Z. Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z oh, whatever the fuck it's called <laughs> that show um, yeah where they've been <laughs> rendered like that um, uh, like the big battle suits that I picked a couple of weeks ago um, yeah, I, well, I yeah, think with I that thought, um, oh, sorry you go on no, I was just saying, I think it's really cool. That's why I picked it. It was a bit different. And uh, yeah, so I think it's great. I think the um, the painting's really gone with the sculpt because I think if I painted that model in my usual style, it, it wouldn't really work because of no. how soft the sculpting is and, and things like, you know, the muscle is quite cartoony. So I think it's really cool that he's done that kind of paint job to go with it. So yeah, I do, do you know that. I would like to see it, you paint that though, just to see what it would look like. Because like you said, it's been painted like that for that. So mm -hmm. it would be cool to see it in a different style. Kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Dragon. You know, the, like that movie, like there's that sort of slight feel Viking. Mm. Yeah. 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 That nice was one. great. And the, uh, the stubble on the chin. Amazing. What's the look out there? Shall we um, do a new one, Matt? Cool. So next up is... Oh, this is mine. This is <laughs> nice. Yeah, I just saw this a couple of days ago. It's just popped up on my uh, feed. It's uh, yeah, just absolutely love that. It's uh, Blight King's uh, shield, I believe. And you know me for Nurgle, so yeah. Um, it looks like, a, like a bit of canvas, right? And like he's like yeah. just blocked out that shape rather than on a shield. I'm like, I, I recognise that shield shape. Otherwise, I'd think it was like on grey card. And he's just like done it on there. So <laughs> how amazing. <laughs> How big is that? That's that's like like looks big, really. Yeah, because it, it looks like yeah. an oil painting. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very cool. No, the, the eyes are amazing. Amazing. really nice pieces. Yeah, that is really yeah. cool. The free hands he's done on there as well. Yeah, so not a miniature, a whole miniature, but a very nice piece of free hand. I thought. Yeah, yeah. it's creepy. Yeah, 
really yeah, creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> yeah. Just like Nurgle should be. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, two very different things already. So, sure. um, shall we see what we got next? We've got a few picks, haven't we? If all of us have done yeah. a pick, I think. Got, got six. So, next up is. <laughs> six picks. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, I. Uh, Nico posted this, or Nico is, am I pronounced? Does anyone know? I'm not 100% sure. Nico posted this. And I was just, uh, I thought it was wicked when he posted the, all of them, but I was especially <laughs> obsessed with the, and someone on this call is definitely going to know the guy in the back with the gold with the beard. I'm not very good with the names. Does anyone know? But that like sorcerer looking guy with the gold mask, I just was absolutely obsessed. I thought he was like, that was a killer model when it came out. And like, yeah. I wanted to see someone do something really cool with him and like obviously the whole like he's done the whole squad and it looks amazing but like that one guy in the back i just i'm so stoked that someone actually really sort of pushed that and like really did that model some justice because i think it looks great obviously the heavy metal team did an amazing job but i really wanted to see someone else do something with it and i, I yeah i just was obsessed as soon as he posted just ahead of that like it looked great and like I think he's non-metallics are just banging the blue bases, just make the gold pop mm. on everything. Like he always does really, really rich, warm flesh as well that I absolutely love. So yeah, it just like so vibrant. There's nothing on there that's really even. Like even the the grey isn't grey. You know what I mean? Like everything's just so vibrant. Yeah. Wicked job. Yeah, yeah. banging. Very nice. That's a that's a lot of hours into five miniatures as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I love the style. They're all, they're all from that set. What? I think it's worth what? it. Is that Blackstone? It's um, Curse City. Uh, yeah, really good pick, Matt. I think I love Nico's yeah. style. And um, yeah, probably one of the nicest I've seen of these Curse City miniatures. And they're just mm. also individual. Uh, I agree. The guy with the beard. Yeah, the, the, uh, I haven't really seen too many of those, as in the. The weird long beard. I think everyone paints the kind of the miniature on the left. Actually, the girl with the sword, like a main yeah. hero. But you don't mm. see many versions of uh, that one in the back. And I think that's probably my favourite. Actually, is the more weird looking kind of mage guys. They're uh, super interesting. I didn't pick up Curse City, but if I did, I think that's yeah. the one I would, I'd like to paint the most. To be honest, and I wish I still had it. <laughs> it's the the ogre is the best one in there for me. Real nice model that. Yeah. Should all do yeah. one. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Nice little challenge. Complete the set, one each. That'd be lovely. Uh, <laughs> apparently, I sound weird. So if that carries on, let me know, and I'll try a different microphone. But I'll do my best. Have to sound weird on the uh, sounds on fun the day on. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What's uh What's the next pick, Matt? Oh, next up is. Oh yes, me. It's just banging, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I like, uh, yeah, like, uh, I really like that model. I've seen it a few times, but uh, all that bust, if you will. But uh, that's the one that makes me stop. I just, I Matt asked this morning for a pick, and I was just scrolling through what I looked over the last few weeks, and I forgot I saved it. And it, again, it was the same thing as wow. Like, uh, yeah. it's not the most, I guess, like realistic with non metallics. I've just got right into non metallics lately, trying to practice them, and uh, mm. but just that one. Yeah, it just gets me. I think it's the tones of the colours and stuff like that and the sash around the neck and stuff. It's just, yeah, I it's love, crazy. I love the, the blue that's just all purple or whatever yeah, colour. It's just yeah. in the, the helmet-y thing. Yeah, just the reflection. Yeah, mm. it's just, yeah, yeah it's it just black. gets me. And I think yeah. that the photography has nailed it as well with the like, the, the, the black background, you know, makes, makes it like push forward a lot more. Um I'm actually, I, it's the first time I've looked at it on like a bigger screen. It's actually way more detail even than on your phone, you know, the <laughs> eyes and the lips. Yeah, just that's that's like, uh, yeah, that's ridiculous to me. That's amazing. Very cool. Miniature mm. is from Robot Rocket Miniatures, and uh, they do a lot of great models. Matt is a great dude. Uh, they do this thing, they do this in a full figure as well, which is crazy. And it comes on oh, like, really? a big base similar to the crest, but. I picked up this bust as well. I think Jamie will appeal to this, but it looks like one of those projects where it's not going to take you forever, but you can have a big impact. And what appealed to me was, you know, you, you got to paint the face, but not loads of extra skin, because sometimes you just want to practice yeah. painting the face. 
and it, it's a nice small area and you could really show off and, and do that the best you could without it being a slog. And that's why I picked this one up. And then you've got obviously yeah. that really interesting shape to play with non-metallic. So I think that it's a bit of a painter's dream, uh, this bust, and it wouldn't be a enormous project. So I think it's very, very cool. You really, yeah. really have to paint the bust in a weird way. You could almost do black armor, like, you know, um, uh, I've got a, sorry, I can't think of his name, the Australian painter, and he always does the bust and he did that. The, oh, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave Colwell. Yeah, Dave Colwell. He's on here every other week as a pick. So. <laughs> yeah. Like, the way Dave sort of approaches sometimes he does that like charcoal black on those sort of sci fi things and it could look lovely. But for me, I even just love the difference between the the blue on one side of the face and the other blue, like the vibrancy between the two, just really makes yeah. that sort of gold metallic pop, like just really nice, the hot, the warm and cold, gorgeous. Really cool. Yeah, it's a good pick, that. You can have my bust if you want mine, because I won't paint it for a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll get I another one. giving that a go. I've never done a bust, so I, I, that one definitely appeals to me. So. Yeah, I really want to get round to it, but you know what it's like. The old <laughs> pile grows every week. Yep. <laughs> nice one uh what we got next matt so next up is my one <laughs> <laughs> i just thought this was brilliant yeah just <laughs> four little heads of a uh, kiss space yeah, marine so heads, heads, right? i recognize top right i think yeah. i recognize that original marine head <laughs> it's with uh with some really outrageous 80s hair <laughs> ah, sh should have got it on the green stuff with Gene Simmons's face, get the tongue tongue longer. Yeah, I'd like to uh, like to see that glued on Marines. That would be <laughs> yeah. Glue yeah. on the noise Marines. Some thousands of noise some, Marines. Some, uh, noise Marines. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. If you did imagine if you did a squad of noise Marines, like, and it was legit your squad in your army, <laughs> and uh, it would be, be so cool. <laughs> and then you'd have to paint yourself as the fifth one or something like that because you can't have a squad of four, can you? <laughs> no good. Yeah. I didn't see that one actually. It's it's uh, sometimes I see a lot of the picks because you know there's those standout things we've seen them, uh, but I definitely didn't see that one. So that is uh, that's really fun. Nice yeah. one. <laughs> that's always a fun little thing. Perfect. Yeah. The, I think it's the last one. Next one, last one, and this was a pain to find because he hasn't actually posted it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't be on volume. We've all seen this, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, ridiculously good. Incredible. What, is that? Is that a model? Mm. Yes, mate. Yeah, that's a painting, man. It's Carol. <laughs> that's Carol. <laughs> yeah, uh, this uh, this well, like Matt, like Matt said, Carol. I follow Carol on all the social media he does, but he didn't actually post this one. So I did find this courtesy of Volomir and his pick of the say, week. Yeah, I he... that, yeah. He I'm, did. I'm following that immediately. He did post <laughs> it, but it was on a vk.com, which is just a weird Russian forum. And that was it. Yeah. Oh wow! Well. Nice. <laughs> it's um, strong flex. It's yeah. one of those models that oh, stops exactly. you in your tracks. I think it's just incredible. Uh, the space, the it's just bananas, isn't it? The is makeup as well. There is artwork of that, isn't there? It's yeah, it's um by Clint, Clint it's, Langley. It's yeah, like, uh, I've seen the armor before. Yeah. It's not official art, is it? Because it's yeah. very no, different. I don't believe it so. is. Yeah, official it is. GW art. And it's right. a is it a howling banshee or like an Autark or something? Uh, it's an Autark. Autark. Oh, well, they call it Dire Avenger on their thing, but it's a bit Autarky. Yeah, that's is... <laughs> got a howling banshee helmet, right? Yeah, that's insane. The texture on the armor is just off the charts good. Like, yeah, the face is amazing, but that sort of, I don't know, like almost pearlescent sort of end of the armor is just, oh, it's gorgeous. That's what? model of the year so far for me, to be honest. What's that? The, under, the undersuit as well. What a surprise. An Eldar model is model of the year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 that's fair. There's, there's Eldar bias, but you have to admit that is in. No, it's 100% bad. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. That, mod, that, that model is already maybe one of my favorite things I've ever seen. Like, it's Agreed. already in my, straight into my top three of all time. Yeah, I'd have that as a poster on my wall, to be honest. And people yeah, wouldn't literally know just a poster of it. Miniature, I, don't think. I guess that's a uh, one-off sculpt as well, isn't it? It won't be a commercial one. I don't want to paint that after that paint job, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Who would? It's perfect. You How can really you top it? Stick of that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah well, some something. things should be a one-off because I don't want to like compare my paint job to that. <laughs> no, thank you. Mine would look like crayon by comparison. That would be the problem. You'd be like, oh, look like someone coloured it in afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they like, well, they'll be able to tell that mine was a model, whereas this one, people are like, is that a miniature? Um, but yeah, it's definitely another one of those in the argument mm. of is miniature painting art. I think this one goes in that conversation. Oh, yeah. and I'm yeah. really hoping it's at World Model Expo. I was going to say, a few weeks time. I would need to see that in real life. Mm -hmm. I'll um, take all the pictures and the video. What's amazing yeah. is if you flick between this and the um, the official art, it's it's so <clears throat> unbelievably close. Is it? It's it's mad. I'll, I'll send you a link to the official <laughs> art later, but it's it's yeah, crazy. Like the, the the makeup and the tone of her skin is fucking yeah. bang on. Yeah. The skin is amazing. It's very yeah. subtle. The makeup is just wow. Um, yeah, this is why uh, busts need to be a, a miniature, right? Because you just mm. can't can't do stuff like this on a, a normal Eldar figure. So it's nice to see both sometimes. Yeah. Lovely. Mm. Cool. Well, I think we could chat about that for an hour, but we should yeah. probably uh, go into the old main segment, right? Oh, oh we got this. Me. I got one. What was I me? Got one for you. So okay. it's. <laughs> so, so uh, me, me, this is actually me and Rich because me and Rich are like, oh, remember when we built the tracks? And uh, yeah, these these people don't know the pain. Having yeah, to stretch the uh... tracks together. <laughs> and everyone's, if you picked them up and looked underneath, there was always a gap about halfway down where the tracks just didn't fucking meet. Or you made your own track that was a different size yeah. to all the others. That was a good time. <laughs> yeah. Put your magic in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what a joyous time that we have a plastic Spartan. I'm waiting Wait. for the plastic Land Raider, but uh, yeah, good times, great me. And also shout out to the Tabletop Inquirer because I enjoy all of their memes. They're uh, pretty damn great. <laughs> <Very> good. <laughs> cool. Should we uh, do the main thing? So tonight we've got our very special guest. Uh, myself and Matt travelled to Golden Demon and we've done shows about that and uh, we had a great time. But along with us, travelled with us, were these lovely chaps and uh, all of them managed to take home at least one demon, which was absolutely fantastic. And uh, they're also part of the uh, lesser well-known Wizard Club. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we thought we would... Uh, them on tonight and basically just chat about their miniatures so everyone in the chat we're going to post some pictures up and if you've got any questions about the miniatures i'll do my best to read those and we can ask each of them so we're basically just gonna look at their models and uh, probably just ask some questions that pop into my head really so matt who have we got first first oh, oh, pressure. The cloud. Pressure. so <laughs> this is a vampire unit uh, one of the most popular Underworlds war bands. I think it's sold out everywhere for ages. And uh, this yeah. is by Robin here. And uh, I think you took home the gold, didn't you? I did just indeed. About ma just about managed the gold with these. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quite happy with that. Quite happy with that. <laughs> so, <painted> so badly. <laughs> <laughs> just give so, them a quick just, uh, look. Just tell us uh, a little bit about sort of how long you spent painting these and what made you think this is going to be... Because I think this was your main entry to the competition, yeah. right? So yeah. what is it made you choose these and, and how long do you kind um, of spend them? You know, when we were all watching the um, reveals back when, I forget when it was they were shown, but um, yeah, straight from the off, I knew, knew I wanted to paint them. And, you know, I'd... Uh, I'd started off with Velas, the, the lady one there, without really thinking I was going to do them for, um, for competition. But, you know, she just turned out so well. Uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to keep this up, keep them all, you know, get them all done to the same level. And, yeah, they're just oh, they're fantastic to paint. And I, sort of, I don't do a lot of AOS either. But, uh, you know, the undead uh, armies always appealed to me. So, you know, these were uh, just really enjoyed painting them. I think it's the one army I'd start, you know, if I got if I started playing AOS. So, to this level, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, good, 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 at, five years. good at painting. Yeah, good at painting the seventy-five skeletons you need to that level. Yeah, two weeks <laughs> per skeleton. I'd have them done in no time, mate. I think Albany <laughs> has one level, right? Which is like golden demon gold or nothing below. There's no like, you know, there's no. Well, we'll talk about that later with his yeah, yeah, yeah. other winning It'll miniatures. <laughs> These were actually quite quick for you, though, weren't they? Because you are. I know we rip the piss out of you for it all the time, but you are a slower painter, but you're also probably the neatest painter out of all of us, which is probably why it takes you a bit longer. But for you, they actually did go quite quickly. Yeah. Is that right? I think it was only about three weeks per miniature, but the leader only took two weeks in the end. Uh, it was quite nice. It in January, Rob. I think it was January, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was, it was, <laughs> off, it was off the crimbo. Oh, yeah, that's right, because, of course, I'd already finished Velas, so, you know, I only had three to do. But what, um, um, yeah. what was it specifically about them that you think made them quicker than your usual lot? Because they don't look lesser than anything. If anything, they're, you're the, they're you're the best thing you've ever entered. Yeah, yeah, I think they are, to be fair, you know. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, they, you know, I was really enjoying them, and, um, you know, I couldn't put them down. Uh, I wasn't distracted by anything else. You know, I was really plugged into them. We had a time, time limit, so. didn't you? So do you think you, do you think the focus with the deadline made you just motor and, and do you know yeah. roughly how many hours a day you were doing on them? Yeah, it, was, it would have been sort of four to six hours, I would say. Um, and then it's more at weekends, you know. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the weekends became, I was tied to them because obviously the deadline was pretty tight because I decided to go pretty late as well. So uh, yeah, it was just a case of having to smash them out as fast as I could, you know. But uh, no, I mean, I think it worked in my favour as well, because when you stay so focused on one thing for so long, you know, every, each one just rolling into the next one was mm. pretty easy. And uh, you know, yeah, sometimes I think a tight deadline really helps with that. Like, I think deadlines are obviously really good. If you really want to get something finished, giving yourself a deadline for something is really important. But especially a tight deadline, I think is really good because, you know, you work out exactly how long it takes for you to get it done. And you, you've just, if you want to enter, you just got to get it done. Yeah, that's it's right. nice to see you paint stuff quickly, mate. Fucking hell, you can do it when you want. <laughs> I, think it. You, I think you had a proof of concept really with the the first one, and I'm yes. going to take all, all credit because you were going to paint some Nurgle space rings, and I was like, <laughs> "Come on, mate, don't do that." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> do some Age of Sigma because it's um, it's a dip. you've won with Nurgle space rings before, which is cool. Yeah, no. but I think seeing her was like, yeah. All four of these, and would you say that you got better at each miniature? Because I know the the last one you did was the the most important yeah. one, the red one. I think that's probably your favourite, and it's yeah. mine as well. Um, so do you think you painted them in order of favourite favourite last for practice? Um, I don't, I don't think so. No, I, I, it, I was most daunted by um, I can't remember what he's called now. The one with you know the bat one with the bat wings, because um, mm. I think there was most more to do on him. Obviously, just Blending all the skin and uh, the wing membranes together was probably the hardest thing altogether. Um, so yeah, but no, the I think and as well because the armor shapes are quite similar on all three that are armored, you know. Um, so I, I knew what I was doing, you know, especially by the by the time I got to the leader as well. So no, but he certainly came out of the bear. He's my favorite out of the three, uh, four for sure. Yeah, I think that red is just absolutely stunning. Yeah. Obviously, he's the one that you've done the majority in the red armor, and red's always something that draws the eye. And it's uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's probably ooh, I don't know which is he's probably yeah he's in the top two, either him or the guy with the the mace. Those two <laughs> are the coolest, aren't they? His name, yeah, yeah, he's cool as well. Yeah. Yeah, was, uh, His mace was... was absolutely horrible to paint just because it's so long. Trying to you know edge highlight all the the sides of the the staff, God, I was glad to get out. Brush that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's there was that. uh, something interesting that would like. I think we said it a load at, uh, when we were at GD because there was like two or three people that did yeah. the full crimson court, wasn't there? And like, and they were all great, but like, the thing about yours, Rob, is like, they they look like they're together, but they're all really individual. Mm. Like they have their own thing, you know. Like, coherent uh, but with different colors. yeah because yeah. the palette works together but they're all it's not just like all red all like, yeah, yeah. and uh yeah they're, yeah, they're great man it's, it's credit it credit all... to max, max fillet really isn't it because obviously i've you know 
although I've changed some details on there, I tried to do something a little bit different in each one mm. to Max. Clearly, that's his, you know, the scheme he invented, and it was so striking anyway. You know, I couldn't imagine any of them in any other colours really having that impact, you know. And David for the sculpt as well, of course, bit yeah, of a dream course. team, David and Max. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. vampires, black and red. I mean, what else are you going to do? It's the best. Yeah, yeah. So, we've got one question uh, so far. And it's from Kane, and he said, in terms of basing, what made you choose a plain black pinth? Um, so I guess what made you choose to do them on the bases they come with and on a black plinth as opposed to uh, making them in a diorama base or something like that? And I think I know the answer, but what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, the, the black plinth just, you know, it's nice and neutral. doesn't take your attention away from the miniatures, does it? You know, And I just think it looks sharp and neat on the plinth there like that. Um, and of course, the tarot plinths are real good quality as well. And, I think uh, as well, yeah. you come with the they come with amazing bases, right? Well, that's, so, yeah, the, ga the gaming bases they're with are so detailed, yeah. And obviously, you know, they just tie the whole unit together beautifully as it is, you know. And um, as I had the thought earlier on, early on anyway, to put like the little cobweb effects on there that I put, obviously with them being stepped and stuff. So um, you know, I just had an idea from the start that I wanted to, to use what they were on. And yeah, I think it's hard to yeah. see from these front on photos, but if you look at the bases, uh, every single rock is perfectly edged highlighted, which is obviously <laughs> something that's going to do you a lot of favors in Golden Demon. So I think that's the thing <laughs> uh, that made made Rob's unit stand out is there wasn't any little bit, including the base, that wasn't painted with the same attention. And that's what you what you need, I think. Uh, so, yeah. is there any pictures of the back map before we uh, move on to the I next? Don't have any mini? back on this at slides at the moment, no. Well, the back's quite good as well. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you have to post them on Instagram now, Rob. I could, I'll, so, I'll put more on. So, should we do another miniature? Yeah. So basically, I've got everyone in order. So, <laughs> so we're all in, all in on Rob's minis first. So. <clears throat> So Rob uh, also did this Khan, which won first place in 40k single. And I would argue 40k single is almost always the hardest category. Well, the two single categories are always tricky. But yeah, there's no doubt about it that getting a gold in single is uh, an awesome thing to do. And this is interesting because unlike the vamps where you went up right to the last minute, you had this one in the back for... Uh, <laughs> So how how long how long when did you finish oh, this basically 2019 i think it might have been 19 yeah it might have just been because I, I i keep forgetting the covid cancellation was 2020 wasn't it the first one so it would have yeah. been for may you know may yeah. 2020 yeah so uh, he's been sat on the shelf doing nothing for yeah but he no, did all right for an old, old boy didn't he yeah <laughs> yeah Oh God, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, really. Over there was some strong entries in there as well. So, mm. yeah, I was really pleased. Just kind of yeah. goes to show that if you, yeah, it's not about you know if you've done the latest thing, if you've done it right, uh, you can put it away, and it'll always it'll always do strong. I mean, since yeah. it has been a couple of years, is there anything like because you must have got a little bit better, or maybe changed your taste or something like that? So, is there anything you would change? if you were starting that mini now or something like that yeah on the inner cloak where he's got the two um purity seals i would have i wish i'd taken those off now and made some you know big flappier ones just to give it more dimension uh I, skill, I, right? yeah because i made one for the back which i really liked but um uh, mm. yeah, you know nice little detail um yeah that's the main thing i think you know potentially sword rather than it having that um because it's got more of a sort of crystalline effect doesn't it you know maybe try and push the nmm you know obviously make it look more silver rather than that crystalline effect um yeah and uh just wish i'd written down a recipe for the gauntlet for the eagles because <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember what on earth i use for that <laughs> do you remember what yeah, you used for the white because uh we've got some nice comments about the white there so do you remember what you used to paint that white armor I'd I do have it written down. I would have to consult. So <laughs> the journal. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you'd know it. I thought you'd know it off by heart. Oh, mate. Worse than a goldfish. <laughs> it's like he's painting recipes book of shame. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> you need to show people. Yeah, so 
I think again, that's something I probably actually would do differently on it on any white next time because I started uh, dark with Steel Legion, Drab, and Fenrisian Grey. So obviously, you're having to um, when you're having to highlight up on you know to white like that, it, it was a bit of a pain in the neck. I should have should have glazed hold on, down. Hold on, hold on. That white you started it with Steel Legion Drab. The whole model painted Steel Legion Drab, and you painted up to white by hand. And Fenrisian Grey, yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a bit of sadism. <laughs> yeah, well. You know, right. they, you know they have airbrushes, don't they? You know they've invented That's... airbrushes. That's, uh, yeah. that's something that blows my mind. Not my fault, so, as you well know. It's your colour theory, man. Like, the amount of times we look like this, we look like, <laughs> like it's this close to me, and I'm like, how did you do that? And I'm like, oh, it would just be like, you know, try colour of like whatever the colour was, red or something. And you're like, oh, no, I used a, a green and an orange. And you're like, what? And then you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, I can see those tints of like colour. I don't know where you get the ideas from. Like, you're a lunatic. That's <laughs> why he's won the gold, mate. Yeah, yeah, first yeah. place. And people online say, I don't know why this one. Two goals. I, uh, I, I, don't, I, can't, Rob, but... I can't believe yeah. you actually went through with it. Like, start painting that drab to go up to white 10 minutes in and be like, it'd be, the paint would be like half an inch thick. And about like, fuck sure. this, I'm not doing yeah. it anymore. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I'm a, did, I, what can I say? I'm a, uh, I like to you, give myself a hard fight, you know. Did you airbrush the Steel Legion drab? Or was it brushed no, no, on? So, no, it's all hand brushed and oh, uh, face coated, yeah. So what was the basic... Talk us through the rest. Don't, talk us don't, through wait, the don't, wait, 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 no, no, wait. Don't, do not tell me you sprayed this black and then painted it Steel Legion drab. I expect I did, yeah. Why me and slam you? You've done a yeah, great fucking job, great. Don't, listen to, don't listen to him. You've got the gold. And it's really good. Jesus so, Christ. so what did you, you do make, you after got you the gold just for fucking effort? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But please tell uh, us, uh, Rob. We won't interrupt you anymore. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating now. <laughs> we just steal the anyway. base coat, and we all went. <laughs> it's the white anyway. Is just ivory and um, dead white. Game color, dead white. In the end, but uh, yeah, obviously the uh, <laughs> just use the uh, the base coat to create the shading, and then nice. just layer up with a few mid tones. Yeah, I think it looks spot on. It's really great, nice. and the cloak's amazing as well on the back. You're almost getting a signature yeah. red, looking at those vampires and this. Yeah, if there's, a, if there's a model with a red cloak, then we know you're going to nail it. So you have to push the boat <laughs> yeah. out and do blue one day. Yeah. Again, that I probably could have done that better because it's not. I think I probably could have got it on the highlight and a little bit more vibrant. Because uh, I think that's Evil Sun Scarlet is the top color on there. You know, I didn't use any um, or not much orange in there. Just I like that because the gold, the gold takes the center stage then, and that mm, yeah. freehand in the corner is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I was actually having a good gawp at it uh, yesterday. <laughs> so I took, 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 took the photo and zoomed in and saw how bad it looked. <laughs> I based that in turquoise, Rich. That's fucking I'm not surprised. <laughs> Robin, is the black like? Is that added in after the red? Yeah, green, but it's it? uh, it's, it's, it's uh, Caliban green on that to shade with. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's so <laughs> dense. That it's, yeah, it's really it's amazing. Man. Yeah, <laughs> you got that a lot wasn't of a I think, a over the weekend, mate. I, think uh, I think a lot of people admired this one over the Golden Demon, and uh, all of your stuff I think stood out. I think it was um, people were really blown away by what these look like in real life because you look at all this stuff on the internet, and I think stuff like yours, Rob, is something uh, that you really need to see, especially when your photography is so terrible. Yeah. Uh, it is. Your, your <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The photographs that will be going up online, online later on are the pièce de résistance. Yeah, these, these photos are great. Good work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. shall we move on to your final winning piece? What do you reckon? Oh, it's there. We had to have some Nurgle, didn't we? We had to yeah. have some Nurgle. So uh, tell us about this lovely-looking chap. What's his name? Where did he come from? All got <laughs> from the uh, spats. 
um, warbands from uh, Underworlds. Yeah. Again, when these when we saw these, the reveal, wanted these straight away because obviously I'm a massive Nurgle fan anyway. Yeah, and just that model. The whole th- all three from the warband are great. And yeah, this one is probably the best actually. I think I'd, I think I tried different green on all three of them. So on this one, just you know, nailed. I think got the right you know, just real nice, strong, vibrant color there, tone to the green. Got more yellow and, in it than the others, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, re- just I was really happy with this. In fact, it's I, I just love the model. It's um, you know, the skin came out really as well. It's probably some of the best skin I've ever done. And yeah, yeah, it's so really good. We uh, we often jest that Robin has one painting mode because he says, oh, "I'm doing this for gaming. I'm doing this for Golden Demon," and we can't see any difference. <laughs> and uh, I think this is proof <laughs> proof in the pudding here because this is uh, what he plays games with in Underworlds, and uh, he's won a bloody Golden Demon with it. But I, <laughs> it's a very kid, very high level. I kid you <laughs> not. I pick, I picked him up in the car. And he just had a little bit of space left in his case. And he goes, oh, might as well just take this model. I made it for gaming. Bloody, what did it win? Bronze? No. Yeah. Yes, it was, yeah. Bronze? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good well see what happens. <laughs> well, that just goes to show Mental. your style and your general level is very, very high. And I think because you all focus on smoothness, sharpness, then everything you paint is always going to have a a shot in something like Golden Demon, and it's, uh, yeah. it's a good lesson to learn. But how long did you spend on this one compared to the Vamps? Because, you know, obviously uh, the Vamps were four GD, but was there much difference in the time? There the probably wasn't. It, it was during lockdown. I, I might have got them done a bit quicker because I was on furlough and that, and I had more time. Um, mm. But it probably was about two weeks, two weeks per one. Well, I think for you, Rob, you probably, you know, you paint for fun and you, you want to make all your minis look as good as you can because you want to look at them right so i guess for yeah, you yeah. even though you're like well i want to play some underworlds you want this mini to look fantastic and then when you did your vampires yeah. it's the same thing for you right yeah i mean that's the the beauty of uh underworlds as well because you've got a low model count and you know it's not like doing an army is it you know you haven't got um 80 odd miniatures to paint so you know the way i look at it might as well you know, invest some time in them. And, you know, because the sculpts are just so good, I can't bring myself to... Uh, again, these are by David, aren't they, I think, as well? Yeah. You know, <laughs> You're in his just, good book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, just such good minis, you know? I can't. I just can't help myself. <laughs> I think, yeah, the, all the Underworlds warbands have just brought out some you know, fantastic minis. For me, those latest yeah. rats are just screaming to be done by Golden Demon, but you can't do them. I want to do them. So... <laughs> I think this year we saw loads of those vamps, uh, you know, in the Golden Demon cabinets, and I imagine. Yeah. Well, I hope they continue to do uh, Underworld. So, you know, old Heresy's taken over at the moment, but hopefully they keep bringing those out, and we get to see some yeah, really great squads, right? And they do, they do make such good entries, don't they, for Golden Demon because they're so individual. You know, I mean, you don't have to do. Well, obviously you could, but you, you know, you don't have to um, convert them in any way because they're just so full of character and. Yeah, and, and again, they're all individuals. I mean, more so with the vampires, because obviously the theme on with the Nurgle guys is the green, but, you know, they're all so individual, aren't they? And they all look so different. Well, I guess it got... legitimises painting just some separate characters, because if you bought yeah. four clamshell separate characters, you'd be like, oh, that's just the greatest hits of the characters. But mm-hmm. because it comes in a set, you can't really argue if it's a, a squad entry, right? It's like... Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, that's the beauty of how Golden Demon's developed a little bit as well. In any way, there's not that stricture anyway that... I know you've spoken about it before anyway, haven't you, on here? But um, you haven't got that stricture within unit categories and things anymore. You've got so much more for, uh, you know, showing off different things. Interesting minis and, uh, yeah. and options. Wicked. Well, it's yeah. been uh, really awesome talking about all your entries. I think I, think I know the answer. But which is your favourite out of your winning entries? Oh, it's, yeah, it's definitely the vampires, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we'll all agree with that. I think a, when people were around the cabinets, a lot of people were saying those vampires uh, <laughs> were very good. So, yeah, good on you. Pressure's Sorry. off you now. and Thank we'll you. Uh, we'll We'll talk about someone else's stuff. But, yeah, amazing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, 
hopefully see some more of your stuff in the next demon. Absolutely. Right then, Matt, what we got? Uh, who's next? Right, next up is... The big man. Hey. Martin Evans. big man, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> Morty. So we've got, a lot, we've got a lot to talk about here because uh, Martin is a relatively new hobbyist, having done it when he was younger. And when did you decide to get back in? Was it 2021? Uh, it was the end of January 2021, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So oh, you oh, pretty on. much had like a year, uh, what, 15 months or something like that. And you put a ton yeah. of work in a very short space of time. And we were all going to go on Demon. And you thought, I want to come and you know, get a piece of that action myself. I'll, I'll bring an entry. And yeah. managed to uh, get a win, which is absolutely phenomenal, I think. Uh, yeah, no matter what you paint in the future, managing to uh, yeah, get a Demon in such a short space of time of being in the hobby is amazing and uh, just shows what you can do with a ton of hard work but from your point of view you know what was what was that experience like and and what was your mentality like when you're thinking uh, I'm going to paint this for Golden Demon what what we sort of hoped and expectations well, well that's the thing I, I I because when because before GD UK has obviously been announced you you were definitely going to Adepticon and uh, and I was just like oh that's just so far out of like like the expense to get there and everything I was like oh, I don't think I'll go you know so when I started painting Mortarion around the end of November that year uh, it just started progressing well and then obviously us hanging out every week I was just basically getting FOMO of like <laughs> oh I want to go and then it was always like oh I will keep painting this if i get it done then i'll take it if not i'll just go and hang out i just really want to go i've never been to gd but always wanted to etc um and then there was like a last like maybe like three or four weeks before we went uh and and i brought it round to wizards for the first time and you chaps just yeah encouraged me i was just like yeah okay Maybe maybe they do actually think it's good, you know. So I, I thought so it was never painted with the intention and then as soon as the intention came in, it was just stressful. Um <laughs> it just sucked. Wait, oh. you were stressed at Golden Demon in Chicago? Like Could you not tell? <laughs> oh really sore eyes. Sorry, I'm well... not crying. I'm just so happy I've got a demon. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I so well, but... For me, it was like, uh, well, obviously, when I started painting again, like, I saw that much. When I paint, last time I painted, they did not do models like that, you know, like that size and the detail. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, what do I want to paint again and stuff? And I saw that. And I remember you, Andy, being like, don't paint that, man. Like, it's, 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 it's this big, you know. And I'm like, oh, I really want to paint that model. And uh, I knew I always wanted to give it a go. And I bought it, like the summer of last year or something. And then, and then um, I remember saying to you, like, oh, I'd be really cool if I could get a good enough that I could do a comp, you know, in a year's time. And then, uh, so it's just all funny that it's just, it's, it's that. And that's what I won my first demon with and stuff. So, um, and maybe that's what got me through because it was like four months of painting, which, uh, yeah. I'm so I'm so happy and proud I did it and and I did enjoy the process for the most part but nearer the end it was it was kind of like driving me crazy of like <laughs> putting too much pressure on myself etc and just nonsense because like everyone in our group of friends has won like demons and stuff and I just wanted to be part of the gang you know I, was like, I really want a demon you know basically uh, FOMO made you made you win it was yeah, only FOMO yeah, so. FOMO made you go and. Just pure jealousy and FOMO made you go. Yeah, I need it. to win. Like, you, know, you just like, oh, I want to be a blow you or a good painter, you know, like, and stuff. And <laughs> like uh, anyone knows me, I think I'm rubbish at anything. So uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, it was amazing. It was chuffed. It was definitely a super, super fun hobby trip, wasn't it? And uh, yeah. Yeah. I think everyone hated us when we were just in the in the the uh, <laughs> ceremony, just screaming <laughs> like football yobs. Um, but yeah, keep, that, you know, keep British it. jobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah, it was it was really cool. Like uh, just 
Oh, up I there, think, I think what I get out of that is that really what made you be able to do a win in a short space of time was pure motivation, right? And I think oh, there yeah. was a, any part you couldn't do, you just practiced and until you could. So what was... What do you think was like the hardest detail or part or thing? Because you probably had to do a lot of learning and a lot of first time things on this. So what do you think was like the most challenging part and what was your favourite part? Uh, it'd definitely be c- consistency. So getting each section of the model as consistent as the last one, you know, because mm. like you'd always told me that, you know, a demon, they pick it up and they tip it upside down and it's got, a, you know, it's... It, you know, like it's got to be every single nook and cranny that's like covered to the same uh, level, um, and it was just getting the the te- the technique of being consistent. And then I uh, I realised that actually it's maybe not the hours you paint; it's the window of time that you like. I I can paint for six hours, but my painting isn't consistent for six hours. If that makes sense, mm, you know. Hey, thank um, you. Yeah, I had that conversation with Will Han at the at the ceremony, and he was like, "Oh, you know, an hour in the evening is like when my hands are the steadiest, and when like I just know mm. I I feel good and I've got a paint, you know." So I stopped trying to like get in an hour before work or an hour this. I would just be like, "Okay, this is my allotted time where I know I like to paint and paint good." And then I mm. guess like I guess the 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 metallics I found quite difficult i was asking rob a, a lot of advice on that because like uh just getting them smooth and uh, there's actually like several different like uh metallics in that kind of bronze that i was going for um and just not look clumpy because i think with metallics when when you've gone wrong it's not like an acrylic where you can thin it down and get it to cover like evenly and still keep it smooth it ends up being kind of like white doesn't it where it's like mm-hmm. chunks up um but you know, I definitely like it's 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 an amalgamation of like uh, my two favourite mortarians, which is Rob's uh, and and Rich Graves. You know, and my that's next where question. I got the idea. <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, and my my favourite thing about it is is probably the cloak is all the texture uh, to answer your other question and the and the gribbly bits. I don't know what you'd call them. Uh, again, that was a Robo Robo uh, recipe didn't come out exactly the same because I'm not Rob. It came out how I did it. You know, but. Uh, I, yeah, I'll tell you everyone that that book of Rob's is 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 gold. Have you have you <laughs> seen have you seen the recipe book? Have you oh, seen it's the playbook. I've, I've got secret pamphlet. I've got pictures. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pamphlet. That. And then the most proud of is, is probably the face because I I know you and I were texting a lot during. I I stripped it four times. <laughs> the, the head <laughs> and the face, and uh, I just couldn't get it. But uh, like any model, that is the the focal point. So um, yeah, things came yeah. out on your. So I think my, some of the favorite my favorite parts about it. Yeah, yeah, but that's it. Yeah, so just your that. yeah, and like the eye, he's it's supposed to look like he's got cataract. Well, I remember sitting with you, Andy, when you did. Uh, is it Ma- Mal- Malaga? Oh yeah, uh, I did that. Uh, and you're like, I've never tried a cataract eye. You've got a picture of blind people on your on your screen. You're like, and you just nailed it, and it was just like, oh yeah. I guess you you've got to just try and push yourself out there sometimes, and you and try things. So I think I think I pulled it off. I, I like it. Mate, it well, was, I think uh, it was so. On, Rich. I was just going to say it was, it was amazing to see like, <laughs> when you first got back into it and we were painting together. The like I don't think I've ever seen anybody fucking um, improve that quickly over that like space of time, um, and to like stick to one model for that long. Like I've been painting for best part of a decade and I can't stick to a model for that long you've been doing it for 10 minutes and you're already better yeah. at it than me at that so fair play um, but yeah it was great yeah. it was really good to see to, like the longevity you put into you put four months worth of work into something yeah. relatively new back into it and it shows because it you know it got you a demon so yeah, play, yeah I couldn't believe it you know and that that's the thing it's like uh, I appreciate that thank you but like uh, I'm very lucky I get to hang out with all of you on a regular basis and stuff and you're that's very experienced great teach me and stuff but it's also like i remember uh the first time you guys took me to warhammer world you know and uh you all said like oh it makes you jump up just from seeing it you know yeah. um in the cabinets and the exhibition of just the stat like because the the heavy metal stuff is incredible that's my childhood but like in a picture it does look incredible but in real life it's it's ridiculous now like that's not the heavy metal style you know but it's just like the the articulation and the 
the finesse and the the uh, the sharpness is kind of what I took away from mm. from seeing that exhibition of just like wow, like you know, you think an edge highlight is this thick in real life, it's not. It's it's pin thin, you know, and just clean and uh, yeah. And then straight after that was just when I I just had this elevation of like I just have to get better, you know. Um, I think it's just the want to do it. So. I think it's that yeah, it's yeah. what I've got out of that is you know it's, all, it's an amazing achievement, and I think people will be like, well, how have you how have you managed to win? And you know, you've only been doing the hobby let's say a year and a half, and but you know the fact you painted the face four times, so stripped it, painted it, stripped it, painted it, stripped it. That <laughs> yeah. shows that shows you're learning, but you're also yeah. really really pushing yourself, and that's the reason <laughs> you won is because you didn't settle. So even though you're new, you're, you're learning to paint this face in Mortarian, and four attempts is, you know, that's, that's a lot, but that's how you get better, but normally people would paint the face on one model, then they do the next one and get better, but you were trying to do this figure, and it had to be this figure, so you had to repeat yeah. all those stuff, but that's definitely, you know, the reason uh, why you won, and I think my last kind of question is, how do you think sort of all the tutorials and things like that out there help with that, because when that I was starting painting, there was basically no tutorials apart from Daz and Joe's ones in White Dwarf. Um, but, you know, coming into it now, there's loads of stuff. Um, and yeah. I, think you, I think you said you went on Rich's uh, Patreon and stuff like that. So just, like, yeah. tell me what your sort of point Rich's of view Patreon. is. Yeah. Well, children, there's a fantastic Patreon. We're named Cult of Paint. Uh, oh, yeah, that yeah. was great. Uh, yeah, obviously, <laughs> used a lot of, like, you and I hanging out and, and stuff and, and showing me things. But... Uh, yeah, Rich, Rich was a big one for this. I, I never will deny it, it is his like the armor is his recipe. I just added, uh, I didn't do as much to your bone. I went more off white because um, his came out more kind of uh, a bone tone. And I I, yeah. I, I just like I uh, I really like thirty k death guard. Uh, I'm about to start a thirty k death guard army, um, and that's more kind of like deck tan white. Um, and yeah, I just really liked the vibe of that, but the texture was the main thing. Like I really got into uh, just just how to create kind of like uh, not even necessarily realistic, but just like it's not just like this flat uh, white panel on the armor. Uh, like 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 your one, Rob. Like that's amazing as well. Like I, I love Khan, but like it's different. Like when you look at it up close, it it looks rough. I mean, I wouldn't do that for every model. It definitely. You have to like pick. If you're doing GD, right? Yeah, if you're doing GD, you got to really think about like, uh, you know, what does suit the app, like what application suits like uh, the model. And uh, you know, he, he's Nurgle. He's supposed to be pretty roughed up. And and I I was never that into uh, when I got back in and like learned all about like Grim Dark and all that and stuff. I like it, but it was like I I felt like I couldn't control it the way I wanted to. Um, and then yeah stumbled upon rich and uh and his incredible painting and he does so much with texture that it was just like i've 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 got to see how he does this you know um and that is they took so long you know because it's just mm -hmm. single tiny brush strokes just built up um and part of the part of the skill is i guess the the uh viscosity of like the paint and things like if it's too thick it 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 leaves actual physical texture, but if it's too thin, it's it it dries too dull and it runs. And I did a couple of tests before I even started this, and uh, yeah, had to definitely like learn. But again, with the cape uh, or the cloak, um, it's the same vibe of like um, <laughs> it's, it's it's loads and loads of brushstrokes, and then like glazing over it to kind of dull those brushstrokes down to give it like it's a warm the texture, right? Effect, yeah. And then with all the, the gribbly bits you know uh that's just straight from from robo's book of like you know the the the, the color tones <laughs> but then all those tiny thin lines which again is like trying to practice your fine lining and stuff you know um you managed to yeah. use all the all that information out there and had to do some yeah. testing had to redo some stuff but yeah. with with the yeah with the info out there and a, and a bit of grit then uh you managed to pull it off so yeah. Well done. I mean, I was uh, I was done with it by the time I got to the wings. Like, uh, <laughs> like uh, yeah. I was just, I had to really push myself through that. And I definitely say, like, to everyone, like, just just 
if you get if you hit a wall, take a break. Because I took like two weeks off of just not even looking at it because I was just losing my mind, and then just pushed through. And uh, yeah, that's what happens, you know. Yes, like uh, yeah, I'll try and try and do it again. I guess maybe yeah. not this year. I'm well, pretty, yeah, uh, you, I'm pretty. You've got it now. Yeah, well <laughs> yeah that you're in now. You'll just be Thanks, getting. Uh, you'll be getting FOMO constantly, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm really? pretty, uh, yeah. Uh, the idea, the idea, it's a mental game. It's definitely a mental yeah. game, isn't it? That's like, uh, um, but yeah, you know, it, it came out pleased. I, it came out good. Like, I'm really pleased. And it's, it's, it's my, it's my more, it's my take on Mortari, you know. And, Martin's uh, Morty. That's a cute name. Martin's Morty. <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely not doing the rest of my Def Guard army in that armor texture, though. It just takes too long. Airbrush. <laughs> I go on, mate. Well, well, uh, I we do. look forward to uh, seeing what you do in the future, Demons, with even more practice. But I think you'll struggle to uh, beat that feeling of your first one. Yeah, uh, sure. So I think, Matt, we better uh, talk about old Cordwells, because he's a yapper as well. So. <laughs> I'll give it short. I'll give it short. <laughs> yeah. So Jamie uh, did three, three winning entries. He did the best out of us, because he did the triple, the triple gold. Yeah. And uh, I think his main entry was this fantastic Necron. Is it a diorama or is it a single model? We still don't know. Uh, but he went for the large category. There's no basing rules now. <laughs> no basing rules. So, yeah, we have, I think it's pronounced Xerus. And uh, there was a, a little animation. And in one of the slides, he had him coming out of this door and had all this green OSL on the back. And I think both of us were like, that's very cool. And uh, I think that you probably had that idea for quite a long time before you started this, didn't you? Yeah, it was, um, <clears throat> I think I'd had it for, what, like, how, I don't know, it was maybe like a year and a half, like two years we'd been talking about it. And I just sort of, it was like, am I going to do it? Would I do it? Should I do it? I think actually the biggest question was whether I could I do it? Because like, I was terrified of the like, you're sort of painting two models, there's like the glow of the green from the back and then there's that sort of very singular point of the non-metallic from the front and it was like whether I could pull off that effect and like pull it off to sort of GD standard and like it being super smooth and clean and you know not having sort of you know like making sure it was sort of flawless and hitting that light direction and getting that effect right and I was to be honest before starting the piece I was terrified of it like absolutely terrified of it and like I think you know, Andy probably knew more than anybody because I think he probably taught me down off the fence or the wall like countless times where I was like, I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. And he was like, just do it. Just try. Like, what's going to happen? Like, stop being so dramatic. And then like, I like did it and I like got, I sort of started it and I was like, oh, maybe I'm going to pull this off. I'd, like this one arm looks really good. And then I was like, oh, crap, there's like a whole model to do. But yeah, I think it was, um, it was it was great. Uh, there were still things that, like, when I look at it, I would go back and I would do differently. Like, I probably would make some parts of it smaller, and I would. There was basing materials that I used that weren't like that were super smooth until I painted them, and then they picked up texture and things that just always made things harder. And then also, I dry fit it like ten times, and then still, once it was painted and I put it together, it didn't fit, and it was just like yeah, it does. Like you know, there was all of that stuff that could invariably happen, but like I think we as a group had like a, a group chat and that kind of kept me on a like I sort of made myself a schedule and I was like I made sure I stuck to that schedule which is very rare for me but like yeah it was great and the end result's awesome and like actually I think in the cabinet it looked okay but it's one of those models that you sort of almost have to it, most people were looking at it front on and it kind of almost needed to be about three quarters in the cabinet so you could see mm -hmm. the glow from behind it and I think this sort of highlights it a little bit but like yeah, it's um, it was it was a great model to paint. It was one of those as soon as it came out, I was like, I'm painting that. I love the idea of like sucking the flesh off the body. I think <laughs> Matt did the original paint job. If everyone correct me if I'm wrong, and like, yeah. and I just like I loved the fact that it was like green and purple. Like I'm all about those like opposite ends of the color spectrum a little bit. Like and all the you know, and I just loved the yeah the green and purple line. So I was like, that's me. Like I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, I think we, we all knew that someone would do this for Golden Demon when we saw the miniature, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe not necessarily the copy of the art as well. So, um, yeah, really, really cool. I think the problem was actually over the sort of COVID period, 
so many minis came out when Golden Demon was off. We were like, we're going to see loads of them at Golden Demon. We're going to see loads of them at Golden Demon. And then there was just too many, too many minis that came out, like Lord Croak, Kragnos, all this stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but this was always one. You knew someone was going to do something with this one day for, uh, for Golden yeah. Demon. So what do you think was the... <laughs> the hardest part because you know you said the the modeling was difficult getting the osl to work but what was the kind of one hardest thing um do you know i was actually just, i thought about this the other day actually and i think actually there was two things that were really hard one was that there's a lot of hard to reach places on this model because he's kind of like he is almost like a giant metal skeleton for all intensive okay. purposes and he's got like four legs and four arms and like cables going from him. So like you're permanently trying to like get a brush in and do an edge highlight. So like say that cable that's going from the part of the dark fortress to the arm, like I mm. edge highlighted every one of those rings, but it was still like such a pain to like edge highlight every single one of those rings. Like the amount of times where I was like, could I just jive brush this? Like, is there a way that I could just bash this? Oh, out? I would do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> It just, that was like hard. And then the other thing that was sort of surprising me weirdly hard was um, painting that teal gem on the, I don't know what you would call his giant weapon, um, but like <laughs> for some reason, every teal paint that I was using had a lot more gloss to it. So like blending the teal was just way more painful to keep that saturation in. Like, cause you can get like desaturated teals, but I wanted it like super vibrant. And I just, yeah, like that was, took way more time than it should have and that's i know that's a really small point but i just remember how bloody painful that was well i keep looking at that actually so it must be must be right because i keep looking at the picture and i keep getting drawn to that little gem so yeah, yeah it's probably probably worth it <laughs> yeah i mean and like ultimately i will say this there's a couple of bits on there and i'm not going to point out which ones but when i finally assembled it and i was like i feel so good about this because i painted it in sub assembly those bits where I was like, well, this non-metallic light source is completely off. So then you'd have to sort of like repaint the direction and like re-highlight. I was like, well, this is great because like trying to correct non-metallics on a model with like four arms, four legs and a load of bloody cables and flesh circling around just was like, yeah. Hard pass. Hard pass. Was, no, from me, Rich. I'm yeah. not doing that, mate. It was, it was almost like one of those... Um, you know when you watch those like Japanese torture game shows and it's like they can't touch them. Do you remember that TV show, like that game but when you had your kids' operation and it was like you didn't want to touch any of the sides or it would buzz you? It was like that. It was like torture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's Holy. cool. We got any other pictures of it, Matt? It just uh, no, just that one. All right. Well, I think we uh, we'll move on to the next entry because we've got a few to to talk about. But this is uh, certainly a standout in the cabinet, especially since it was in the wrong category. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I know I would, I would have got gold. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> so should we do the uh, the next next winner? All winners tonight. Yeah. It's so cool. it's yeah. probably one of my favourite ones. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Love this one. But remember, you can't win Golden Dean with OSL. That's the word on the street. That's what I've been hearing. <laughs> don't, don't do OSL. You can't win. That's what I've heard. It's not heavy um, metal enough. Exactly. <laughs> so this is some Lord of the Rings model. I don't know what it is. Uh, actually, I watched this film last week. This was this is The Hobbit, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, Lord of the Rings. This is, the yeah. is it? From the Return of the King. Yeah. yeah. And like I think uh, Andy, it was me and you again that were chatting. And when that model came out, and I was like, I want to paint that model. And you literally looked at me and went, Are "You mad? Like it's tiny." And I was like, "No, no, I really <laughs> want to do it. Like I genuinely really want to do it." And like I saw the the heavy metal paint job, and like it was, I wouldn't say it was, it was just a little bit more muted than that moment in the film. And I like I really wanted to capture that like glow in the beard. Like I, obviously, you know, I love the heavy metal style. It was just, I really wanted to make sure that his face just matched that. Like, I think if anyone sees my Instagram channel, like you'll see that I've sort of posted that side by side. And it was almost like, I wanted that glow. And I also wanted that red that was in his cloak. And I mean, I will say like blending from a sort of, kind of what a, is like a rich magenta and purple to sort of a bright, like green sort of teal color was sort of like the heart of it and not making it go gray in the middle. Um, but yeah, it was like, this was one of those models that like, as soon as I saw it come out, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew how I wanted it. I wanted him looking like he's like, there's that moment in the film 
where they realize that like he kind of floats above a super of a cliff and there's like all the dead bodies underneath it. I was like, I want to recreate that. I wanted that green. I wanted that tone and I wanted it to be like, it just, I really wanted it to pop in the cabinet. I wanted it to be something like no one's seen in the Lord of the Rings cabinet, right? Like mm. I just didn't want to do another, you know, uh, uh, Saruman or something. I just wanted like that to really pop. No offense to Saruman's, they're amazing. I love them, but I just wanted something that really was different. Gonna say well, that. yeah, I think this one really stood out, didn't it, amongst all the entries in Lord of the Rings? And I don't really know if anyone else did it. Um, so, yeah, really, really cool to pick this model for a start and also just the amazing execution. So, I think I love the category as well, wasn't it? This year, there was so <laughs> much quality, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you'll be pleased to know that the chat is telling me off for not knowing uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> The Lord of the Rings kind of passed me by, but I have been, have been watching some of them, so I'll know it soon. I was, I was too busy playing their Ocarina of Time, I think, when the, <laughs> when they came out. I will anyway. say, he, he looks bigger in that photo, but he's like the size of a thumb. Like yeah. he is absolutely tiny. He looks massive in there, but he is, yeah. That's, That's what she. I, I'm pretty sure I needed glasses after painting that model. That did damage <laughs> to my retinas. That was. Like, <laughs> That's why you don't want to do Lord of the Rings. It's too small. <laughs> best, best category. Yeah, best it. category, Matt's saying. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I really enjoyed it. The, the base is amazing as well, actually, dude. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, it was one of those. I'm just, sorry, I'm just turning the light on so that people maybe can see me. Oh, no, that's maybe the wrong one. There we go. Um, no, it, it was one of those things. I knew what I wanted to do. I actually used. I can't remember whose technique it is, um, where you basically mix the Max, uh, Max mini well. putt with Maxes. You mix yeah. Millie putt with uh, modeling clay, and then you bake it, and then you break it apart. Um, and it was great. Actually, that base for most of my models is generally on like a tarot plinth, but that was actually a piece of uh, plumber's pipe that I basically cut out and then built up the stuff inside and then built the top on the top of it. And use part of the Lord of the Rings basing kit. And so it was, yeah, completely from scratch. And then even that sword that's sort of sitting there was like one handle was from, I think, the sheath on the two other models that come with him. And then the other one was a, a sword from another Lord of the Rings thing that I then glued together to make like a whole sword and then painted it because I remember about, because I painted that about a year and a half ago and I sent it to like Rich Gray and was like, oh, what do you think? And he went, yeah, it's nice. It needs a sword on the base, though. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, and if anyone knows, like, Rich, like, Rich is pretty blunt with his feedback. And, like, uh, Rich Gray, sorry. And, like, he, uh, yeah, he didn't mince his words. He was like, yeah, like, all the skulls are nice, but, like, maybe you want to break it up so it's not just skulls. And I was like, yeah, cool. Fuck, you know, right, you're right there. Thanks, Rich. So, yeah. At least he didn't say yeah. it was TZ Watts. It's, and I'm all, I'm all cool with that. Yeah, <laughs> Well, Dan, it was a famous uh, favourite entry from the comp, and I think a lot of people uh, thought the same thing. It's your favourite one, isn't it, Rob, of Jamie? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really, really yeah. like it a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's epic, mate. Well done. And when, when did you do that? Because we asked Rob when he did his Khan, because this is another one you had, I think, in the in the bank. So when did you yeah. finish this? So we were going to, I guess, was it, we were going to go, me and you, to Chicago, was it two years ago? Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So it was it was ready for then. So it's two. So twenty. It's, did you finish it in twenty twenty then? I uh, I think so. Yes, it might have actually even been finished in twenty nineteen. But like I finished it and it's been sat there waiting to come out the cabinet. I'm not shared any photos with anyone. Been dying to share it. I sort of seen that a couple of people took a stab at it. I think the only one that was sort of went in this direction was David Aroba, I believe, sort of did a similar like OSL look to the front of the face. And I think he was just painting his squad um, or was doing a squad entry sort of with these models. And then, um, yeah, I, I just was like, oh my God, like I, I really wanted to just like reveal it and bring it out there because it's something that I'm, um, it's one of my favorite models I've ever painted, like period. Mm. It's just, I just didn't, I loved it from start to finish. It wasn't easy, but it, I think it, it was every so often, like, I think all of us go through that where you, you paint a model and you realize you've had a bit of a step change where you've leveled up and you mm. like, at the end of that model, you look back and go, I'm better for painting that model. I think this was one of those for me. I was going to say, yeah, it's like, tight, man. if you ignore Gareth Nicholas's Lord of the Rings entries, for me, it's probably <laughs> one of the best Lord of the Rings entries that's been around in a very long time. 
Thank you. I, um, take anyway. that <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think the, so. my favourite ever is, um, Anne, is it Anna? I can't remember her second name, but she did the big one on the big base with the leaves and that. Don't even know the model. <laughs> it's uh, the guy from The Matrix who's in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> what? Weaving. Mr. Anderson. Elder Mr. Anderson. Elder Weaving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Anderson. There's one from a few, a few years back, Matt. You well, might know it's. One of the hobbits, um, the guy, I forget which character it is, but he's got the little um, catapult, hasn't he? And he's shooting a goblin off off the edge. Yeah. It's, it's during the, um, the the goblin chase, isn't it? In the yeah, caves. Yeah. That's a fun years one. Back. That was fantastic. Yeah. We'll have to do a Lord of the Rings special, I think, and I'll, um, I'll make sure I've watched the films. And uh, <laughs> then I'll know what you're talking about in that. <laughs> I might get rid of pieces of this. But, oh, it Ori or Nori, I can't remember which one. It's the, the book one, which is, is Ori. All right, yeah. Well, I think we should. Uh, I think we should talk about the final entry of the night. I mean, I've almost kept it on time, and Henry will be proud of me. That's my main aim of today. My fave. <laughs> this is my <laughs> life. So this is a thunderbolt question mark. Yeah. From the very popular game that I've seen loads of people play, Aeronautica Imperialis. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, how long did you spend on this one? Uh, not as long as I would normally like to admit. I found <laughs> it was a bit more like a McLeod, like two weeks intensive. It was over the. Now we're talking. It was over the <laughs> exactly. It was over the Christmas break, so I was off work, and I think I was off for like three weeks, and uh, I just, you know, I, I had that luxury of the time, right? Whereas like normally. Uh, not to give too much away on myself, I only get like an hour or two an evening, right? So I'm sort of to Martin and even like Will's point, I just come home and do like an hour or two in the evening. And this one was one of those where I was like, oh, I can just sit there and do it in the daytime. And, it, you know, with Christmas movies on, it was just, I breezed this one through. I had so much fun on it. I knew. Yeah, and eggnog. The one, sorry, yeah, and eggnog. And I knew what I wanted to do with it. Like, I was like, I want to have a blurred background. I want to look, it looked like it's blasting through and like flying with speed. And like, I, you know, I, I have my references. I think I could have and wish I'd painted the background a little bit stronger and made it a bit more obvious. But like, it's I, your first time trying that, right? Like, I've never seen a, a plane with a backdrop. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's got to be a first. I mean, I can't think of a, another yeah. GP winner that's done that. Um, yeah. So good on, good on you for, for doing that. I think that's, that's super cool. I think, I think any more on it, and it would have been too distracting for the mini. So. It does frame the mini nicely, doesn't it? Because the yeah. mini's kind of the same colours with the blue and the red, but it, it just pops out from it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you paint the backdrop by hand or was it by a brush? Yeah, no, by hand. Uh, by uh, airbrush or by hand? By hand. Uh, so I used a paint retarder. So I would put the paint on, put the retarder in it, and then I was like, kind of like, I basically mapped out roughly where I wanted it to be, and then I was like brushing back and forth with it to do it. And then once That's I... Really like, interesting. Oh, once I got the base down of it, then I would use a little bit more and like wait. You have to wait for a while for the retarder to dry and then go back and put another layer. Otherwise, one thing I found, which was I, I sort of the first time I did it, I had to sort of like sand it off and redo it again, which was that like I thought the paint was dry and I went and painted it. But because the retarder was there, it like pulled the paint back off. So then you left sure. with a lovely bit, you know, like the worst thing that can happen is it like ruins that smoothness. Right. Mm. So it just pulled the paint off it. So I sort of learned a lesson sanded it down did it again um but yeah it's it sort of that almost took as long as the airplane itself weirdly but uh because just trying to get those highlights and those drop-offs and those moments where like there's quite a sudden shift and to get that straight sort of line and like your desire is to want to glaze it and like smooth it out but i was there just mm. going back and forth with a brush um yeah and not only that for me i don't often truly paint heavy metal style and i'd say this is the closest i've ever been to like heavy metal and uh for me and i really enjoyed it because it just was a it was a different challenge and i just I, I actually they're really good kits to be honest it's like when you got it out of the box it's so like the the mold everything it's everything super sharp like i, I don't often as anyone on this chat knows ever want to do a squad and i was like i could quite happily sit here and paint all three of them the only thing that yeah. sucked was like and i regretted it as soon as i started it was doing those stripes because like making sure those lined up, <laughs> down, I don't know how, 
anyone that's ever painted stripes, you instantly go, crap, why did I paint stripes? Like, and I maybe that's what pushed you over the edge to win. So you got to do these things, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was great. Like, I used, to be honest, like, there's a, a credit, you know, the red on the, I don't know, the engine tips or whatever, like that. <laughs> Darren's uh, like Blood Angel recipe. Like I used, you know, pretty much heavy metal recipes as well on this. And it was just really nice. Like I just enjoyed it. It was one of those things over the Christmas break, just switching off, eggnog as Rich said, and uh, did some movies. So yeah, it was dope. And, uh, I guess you really more, focused uh, uh, on the so, sharpness, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is really sharp. Like I didn't, like I knew it was sort of sharp, but like, to uh, everyone's point earlier, like you sort of don't know how sharp you are till you're in the cabinets mm. with the, the other bowls, right? Like you think you're sharp and then you sort of put your next yourself next to like Darren's or Aiden's sharpness and then you're like, mm. oh, crap, like that's actually sharp. Yeah. Mine looked like it was done with a, you know, a house roller by comparison to sort of their <laughs> stuff. You know, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was really good. Like I, I loved it. It was one of those things where, yeah, I probably do something else like that in the future at one point, but not right now. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Maybe some of the Eldar. Really cool. Ones are really cool. Yeah. yeah. I like it, I, the old ones. Like, there's some really great models they have. Like the Imperial ones is one that looks like um, yeah, the jet out of Alien. I can't think of, you know what I mean? Like it's got the longer tips of ever or Aliens, should I say, before people tell me. Oh, the, yeah, the, isn't that the Imperial Guard one you mean? The, um, yeah, that's it. Called, that yeah. Go. If anyone knows me, I'm really crap with the names of models. I'm like unbelievably <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm like, what's the one with the big sword? And everyone's like, shut up, Jamie. It's, you know. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> right, mate. You you've done really quite a good paint job, so we'll let you off. Uh, <laughs> really interesting that you um yeah did the backdrop by hand and and really relied on the retardant. That's that's super interesting. So Once. yeah, really cool. Cool to see uh, small scale category getting some uh, amazing paint jobs with uh, a bit of innovation. Let's call it innovation. So that's super was cool. <laughs> was it? Was it acrylics on the the background? Yeah, I, I, in, I wanted to do oil. I just didn't yeah. have time, and like I just didn't know how it was going to dry, how quick it was going to dry. I didn't yeah. have a spare place to test it. Like it just was one of those things where like normally I would do a test, so I did a test of the jet. To like make sure that I liked the blue and stuff like that before I painted it, but the background I kind of that was like mm. well I'm done. And I, I, I would have liked to have done oils. I think it would have been more vibrant and a smoother mm. blend. But so I bit. tried oils myself, and I was just like, nope, don't get this. Can't figure it out. And then I looked at the Can't instructions. Learn that quickly on the job, right? <laughs> and it was like practice. three weeks to dry, and I was like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Well, I think that uh yeah that's been uh really cool to talk about all those entries so seven things to talk about and uh, a really nice mix of stuff so uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it i've got one final question actually uh just to kind of all three of you and it's from jordan and he said do you find yourself or oh, how much do you find yourself touching up the entries like after you've put it all together and and you know, after you put those sub assemblies, did you have to do much touching up and fixing, or was it put it together done? Go okay, Rob first. Yeah, I think there's always going to be the occasional change in the odd um, highlight. You know, if you if there's any, any zenith points, things like that, or if you feel there's a look, you know, take the battle damage for instance, whether whether or not you want to add just that little bit more. Um, yeah, it, it, with the vampires, it was difficult because I had all those in pieces basically. So yeah, it was, there was a lot of checking once you know once I uh, finished on those because I did I did quite a lot of dot highlights to those as well, just fine dot highlights. Um, yeah, by and large, you know I think I tend to check as I go along as well. So in terms of when it's you know finely glued, generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with it. But again, it's always good to look over the model. I think you know because you've got to be 100% satisfied with it as well. So it's it's always really important to look at it you know look over it just analyze it as much as possible because that's what the judges are going to do so yeah it's definitely worth that extra you time check as you go that's cool and martin you had the largest miniature and mm. probably the most sub assemblies so how like when <laughs> you stuck all yours together like how many sort of touch-ups did you have to do uh, that weren't planned 
there was a there was a couple that were like uh like i don't know chips or something uh once it was stuck together you have to like fix uh my obviously using true metallics and stuff i didn't have to worry about the lighting as much um uh but i think it's a good uh it's not so much as touch-ups as more like refinement like a good mm. thing that you guys encouraged me to do was like i i got it to the point where i was like i'm done with this and then we left it for like a week and then we all looked at it and it was like okay and i used that last like six or seven days before we left to do refinement you know i was mm. like one of those things like uh after you do golden demon you you can uh very kindly speak to the judges and stuff they're, they're really nice to make time for you just to tell you if you didn't win what you could have done better or if, even if you did win what you could have done better and what why they thought you placed and stuff and I remember Adrian actually saying like some of the things that he pointed out of what he really liked about Morty were stuff that like we all discussed about my piece within that seven days leading up to it. And I added or adjusted, you know, so I think uh, if you're going to enter, like use the time that you have. Um, don't I, it's so difficult because you shouldn't overdo like you don't want to overdo something, but there is always time for refinement, you know. Um, take a step back and then and then make the yeah. judgment call of what to add yeah. Yeah. after you've had a break right and there's yeah. a time to stop yeah Absolutely. that's cool yeah. and jamie what about yours because you well how much did you have to do when you put together the all the rings entry and then how much was there us in there i'm pretty sure <laughs> which one yeah. needed more changes after it was assembled so the Lord of the Rings was a one, like it wasn't sub assembly. No changes, yeah. No. yeah. So like that was fine, and the plane was a one as well. The only thing that they needed was like sticking to the base, and there's always like little bits there, but that wasn't a huge amount of a uh, issue. The Zeris there was a lot. Like I had to change mm. non metallics, and like actually, I would even say to anyone like when you just budget time for that. Like I used to do it the night before GD, and would be like assembling them, and like oh fuck and they always super... know when you've done that yeah and like you can see like i've had it on previous entries where you're doing it and you can see a lovely big super uh, glue mark and i also worked on a resin model and i'm not going to say which one and it did win for me but the when i came to glue it together it happened to be that really hot summer i think we had in like 2018 or 2017 hot summer. and then basically the resin model had warped in the heat and so it didn't oh. fit together the same and i sort of had to like the night before like fill in with green stuff, like bake it with a hairdryer and then like repaint oh, over that hair oh, and glaze oh. it all in. Like, it was an absolute pain. So there's me thinking, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to bed at 10. I'm going to like wake up feeling fresh and pumped for GD. It's like ended up going to bed at <laughs> five in the morning and was like driving to like up to Coventry at like eight o'clock, like, like chugging Red Bulls because I was so exhausted. So like, you know, like I think, um, yeah, like budget that time. Like, because there's always something that goes wrong. There's always something that doesn't stick right, doesn't fit right, doesn't go right. The OSL is off. Like, it, it's yeah. Like, no matter how many times you check it, test it, it still goes wrong. Like, yeah. And like, I don't think any of us on this call have had it go oh, no. perfect ever. Oh like, God, no, no, no. <laughs> it's all part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, this is almost like therapy for all those times where you've wanted to throw your nearly finished entry at the wall the night before GB. <laughs> Let, let's just be honest. There's all of us have had that moment where you're like, "What? Fuck this! Fuck you! I'm done." Sorry, swearing at the end of the conversation. <laughs> hey, we did the, I did. I remember the warning, so we're all yeah. good. Like, I'm the reason fine, for the man. warning. You set my. You, you pressed my trigger point. There you go. That's the, how to trigger Jamie. Talk about <laughs> So there we go. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, really, really fun answers though so basically what i take from that is be like rob and check as you go <laughs> uh, check as we'll, you we'll go. take some lessons from rob can't we but uh read that little book yeah yeah we'll, we'll, we'll publish that shall we we'll do that yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> sounds like a, sounds like a book of misery yeah you should start a little bit of a like eBay page for like Rob's secret recipe book and see what we can get the price up to. Or see if we can actually do like a heist, see if people can steal Rob's book. That's you know, be a little, uh, you just put that in my mind. That could be a little retirement plan for me, you know. I'll hit 60. <laughs> it's a nest, it's a nest day, so like your man of war, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just as long as it's not a good one. 
What a game. Well. That recipe is rarer than ends teeth, that is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You don't know what you're missing. It's best stuff ever. <laughs> well, I think we, before my internet fully dies on me, we should close out the show with our final part. Uh, we created a hashtag called Paint Cultist, and it's so we can share all your guys' work. So if you want to get your work featured on the show, use the hashtag. Don't just copy and paste it. Use it with care. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a look and pick out some cool stuff. Normally not whips, but uh, anyway, Matt, you've chosen these this week. I have. So and let's see what you got. I think Henry's going to be really sad with my choices because he would really want to talk about <laughs> them all. So the first up is Oh it's worth oh. you would like that. Yeah. Right. Awesome. yeah. Yeah, that's that's very that's Henry yeah. would like that. Yeah, that's in, in his name. So mm-hmm. why why are you not here, mate? We're all we're we're thinking of it. Yeah. <laughs> that was almost our pick of the week as well. What's right. the miniature from? Yeah, don't recognise uh, it. Can't remember off the top of my head, I'd have to look at the post again. Uh but sure. yeah, I just thought it was very cool OSL. Nice, yeah, nice that. Lo- lovely little diorama, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nice. nice. What's next? Next is another one that Henry would really want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him That's paint something like this. He always, you know, he likes a lot of this stuff. I'd like to see him do it. Critters. Um, they're cool. I love the scalpel. Like... Yeah. yeah. Do you know remember? You <laughs> yeah, might remember it. There was, a, there, there was a series of kids' books called Red Wall. And it was all about anthropomorphic, uh, in, like animals, like from, from like British animals, like badgers and stuff. And they all carried like great axes and had chainmail and fought and stuff. <laughs> uh, this is like the sci-fi version. That's exactly what it reminds me of. This is actually super topical. If anyone's seen this third season of Love, Death, and Robots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, is that yeah. the rat episode? Rat. Yeah. yeah. Which is also probably one of the best ones of that season as well like i thought that was just absolutely epic like so that well that was funny I'll have really, to watch good that. really good paint job yeah very fun Maybe, it's it's got really graphical, well. like, they look really 2d in that picture don't they mm. oh yeah they are yeah that's cool nice yeah i like that hmm. Hit us with the next one, Matthew. Let's keep what, it rolling. Critters would not be critters without a Joshua Leg. <laughs> oh, man yes. himself. Yeah, I did see this. Wicked bird. Yeah, that when was the last time he painted an actual human? Oh, no, he did. he's done some recently. He's done some, did he do some space walks or something? He's done some, he's done some minis, but we're always going to feature the critters, aren't we, really? So. Yeah, uh, the acorn's the one. Fantastic. Is that what he's looking at, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's sizing it up to see if the ice is the, 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 like, um, want the acorn. The yeah. texture of the fur on the hip is mental to me. Like, uh, I don't know if you've seen a squirrel in real life, but yeah, it's like really ratty fur. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really good. That is and nice. I'd love to, tiny love to as see well. all his pieces. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Who's not seen a squirrel, mate? Come on. <laughs> no, no, I mean like here. Like, like, Have you seen a red one? You definitely don't get where you're from, Jay. They're all red. <laughs> We've all seen a squirrel. <laughs> I mean, right in front. Look, of in you. real life, not who's seen in real life? Though? That's the thing. <laughs> I saw a fox take one out at work uh, a few weeks ago. In fact, that was pretty wild. <laughs> <That's Jesus. laughs> yeah. Nature. <laughs> Uh, this turned into spring watch, lads. It's not spring watch. (laughs) (laughs) We could do a spring watch special episode if you want. (laughs) That's a that's a good log. That that's a good log. (laughs) We we get Rob out in the field. All right, lads. Rare rare as end teeth. These red squirrels. (laughs) (laughs) Let Let me camera. Camera. I'll get some action shots. Oh, shit a thicken. A fox was the next one, Matthew. Let's roll on before these. The last one is. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rob, you should have done this one to round it out to five, you lazy git. (laughs) And you're in such a cool bit as well. Are you you going to paint it? I do own it. 
Shocking. That doesn't mean you're going to pay it now. <laughs> we, know, we know you own it. It's a miniature. <laughs> it's made by Game Workshop. Rob owns it. That's there. It's the... Shameful. Uh, Anyone think I was going on the flex or anything? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a mini I actually really wanted to paint. I yeah. turned it up and then uh, I gave it to Rich. So, yeah. <laughs> I did paint it. It's a lovely mini to paint. Like the, the, the armor, even though, because she's really little actually. Um, it's super crisp, beautiful model yeah. of paint. Great model. Oh yeah, I yeah. forgot you'd done it, Rick. If you're arm, yeah. I think yeah. Like a dragon yeah. on the uh, shield nice. on this. Dragon. Yeah, that's really nice. Mm. Did that really? come out on its own? Like, yeah. It's not. It's not like Warcry. Like no, it's just single individual. figure. Yeah, yeah, when they redid the book and they redid the um, vampire release. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of yeah. Doesn't she have pink hair in the G dub one? Like, is that right? She does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, black armor and red hair in it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Rich Gray did it with like white armor and stuff. Silver like, armor. It's, it's, it's silver. silver. Yeah, it's really, um, I, can't, I remember it being really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mid tone dragon was a white one. That, was, yeah. that one in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Most people white wouldn't. Black have... skin. Oh. Yeah. There was one at sure. Chicago that most people wouldn't have seen where they did it with that like neon pink OSL underneath it. That was pretty... Yeah. No, really. Yeah, that's cool. It's a good one. Well, chaps, I think that's the. That uh... is it. Oh no! I just the party. Andy's left. He's decided he's had enough. There we go. It's the end of his show. There we go. <laughs> Am I disconnecting when I'm about to say something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're still here. You're still there. Still here. Oh yeah. Just connecting. All right. Well, chats. Before uh, yeah, I keep keep losing my internet. Uh, we'll round up the show. Thanks very much. It's been very very mm-hmm. fun, and uh, hope people watching enjoyed it. It's been great for me. We're just kind of chatting about all you guys as miniatures. So uh, in the next episode, hopefully we can get some more guests. We're always trying to line up a load of guests, uh, but these guys were easy because they're uh, definitely part of the cult. So yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. And uh, nice. yeah, you. we'll see you next time, I guess. See you soon. Bye. See you later. Bye for now. Bye.